Hi there. Linda Nenne here. It is 11.11 11 a.m. Just when I hit record. That feels uh, like an auspicious time to begin this conversation. <clears throat> so welcome to Growing Down, our second episode. Um, today I've made some notes for myself, but I quickly realized that my notes are as, uh, as jumping back and forth and spiraling and waving and weaving as uh, my spoken word. So I'm going to begin by reading a poem by Marion Wood Woodman in a minute. First, I want to say this. I once had a teacher that uh, said to me, Linda, you need to know where you're going before you start speaking. And I was like, well, I do sometimes know where I'm going, but it's not a straight journey. That is not how my brain, body, uh, function. Um, and for a long time, I went quiet because I was like, well, if I'm going to know where I'm going before I start speaking, I'm just going to wait until the day I know where I'm going. And that day hasn't arrived yet. So I decided to just let myself speak without knowing exactly where I'm going. And that's where this beautiful poem by Marion Woodman comes in. So Marion Woodman is a Jungian analyst uh, and uh, I would say a mystic and, uh, oh, and by the way, I think she's dead. <laughs> no, I'm unsure. <clears throat> She's very much alive in me and in my life. So she's alive in some dimension. And this, when I read this poem, so I often read this poem in the beginning of courses that I facilitate uh, because it kind of encapsulates so beautifully uh, not only how I facilitate, but how I invite you or anyone who comes to practice with me to approach the wisdom that wants to unfold inside and outside. And the poem is from a book called Coming Home to Myself. And it goes like this. Linearity does not come naturally to me. It kills my imagination. Nothing happens. No bell rings. No moment of here and now. No moment that says yes. And without these, I am not alive. I prefer the pleasure of the journey through the spiral. Relax. Enjoy the spiral. If you miss something on the first round, don't worry. You might pick it up on the second or the third or the ninth. It doesn't matter. Relax. Timing is everything. If the bell does ring, it will resonate through all the rungs of your spiral. If it doesn't ring, it is the wrong spiral or the wrong time, or there is no bell. So relax and enjoy the spiral. Relax and enjoy the spiral. Mm.
and I want to say thank you to all of you who reached out to me in the last week after listening either on the podcast or those of you that watch the YouTube video. Your words of encouragement means a lot to me and I'm so glad those of you that said that so many of my words resonated, that the bell rang, it, it was such a joy for me to hear that, to get to take part in that. Um, yeah, so I'm receiving, I'm receiving the encouragement. And let's open, let's open with the, <clears throat> with the healing song that will be the song, the theme song for this, this offering. Uh, maybe you remember the words if you listened to the last, the first episode. I will sing them, you can sing along or just listen. <sighs> If you want to get up to the joy, you gotta go deep. So go down, go down, go down. If you want to get up to the joy, you gotta go deep. So go down, go down, go down. Go down, go down, go down. Mm. So yesterday I was invited to an Instagram live to speak about self-discovery and motherhood. I'll add the link in the in the notes below if you want to, to listen to it. And the woman that that invited me, so her name is Nora, and she she asked me about when my own journey of self-discovery began. And I'll share this story in a moment. But what happened after the conversation was that I went for a walk in the in the forest with my dog and I began to contemplate like what has changed since that moment in time what has changed so the story is is from 2007 and I was wondering have I changed like me, the human being that is now sitting here talking with you or talking, it's actually that I'm talking to you, it's a monologue. Uh, if you want to join the conversation, you, you can write to me with your own reflections and thoughts. I'd love to hear them. But anyway, so my realization was that, no, I actually haven't changed that much. Uh, since that beginning of my self-discovery journey. So then what has changed? Because what I feel is that there is this sameness. I can feel it in my bones, in my muscles, in the, like in the tissues of my body, a sense of self that is the same no matter where in life I land there is that sameness so then what has changed and that made me realize that the the biggest change is how I relate to myself meaning how I am in relationship with my human self and the experiences that this human being is having in body, mind, psyche, emotions, dream world, everything. 
in relationship with other humans, with nature, with animals. And another thing that has changed is, is that I am what I am aware of in myself and in my environment and how I am in relationship with what I am aware of. So it just kind of boom, relationship changes everything, even if it doesn't change a thing. <laughs> Mm. And so the story that I shared with her was, uh, so this was a moment in time when I was exploring like expansion of consciousness through the use of a variety of drugs. One of them was mushrooms. And then there was <clears throat> pretty much anything I got my hands on. I tried. And so I was in South Africa at the time at a festival and I was one in one of those portable toilets that they have in festivals. You know, the blue ones, the blue plastic toilets. And there was a mirror in that toilet. Some of them have mirrors, like these tiny mirrors just beside the door. And it was quite dirty and dusty. And I was in high on mushrooms and I was in there and I looked at myself in the mirror and in that moment, I just so utterly loved myself or I loved the person looking back at me. And it felt like I was pouring love into the picture and the picture was pouring love back at me. And I loved, it, it was in that moment I become, I became so aware of everything about me, my physical body, my thought patterns, emotional patterns, all the parts of me. And I just loved everything. So there was only love in that moment. And then I opened the door and I stepped outside and the, the world was pouring love all over me. And I was pouring love back at the world. And it was it, the world. So all the plants and the trees and the birds and the ground and the sky and the humans and everything, the sounds was like luminous and soft. And like this mm, just mm, big, warm hug. And I stepped outside and I walked into this world of love. The world was love. There was nothing else that existed. Everything was in this embrace, completely immersed in love. And, and I, I, I remember how my feet touched the earth and it was so like the meeting was so soft and gentle and that connect that I could really feel the pulsation of the earth underneath my feet. Uh, and for a moment, I just felt like I was a plant. I was, <laughs> I was a plant, like I had roots that grew down into the earth. And of course, that experience didn't last forever. It kind of, it lingered for a week and slowly it dissipated. And uh, there I was, <clears throat> suddenly very aware of myself and aware of the world around me and very aware of all the pain 
and the suffering and everything that had been there all along, but I hadn't been aware of it. But I had let it kind of drive me. And when I think back to it, I'm realizing that before that moment, the relationship I had with myself was very limited. I was mostly aware of everything around me. And the, the very limited relationship I had with myself was not very kind. And it was not a kind and compassionate relationship. It was quite brutal and very judgmental. The way I spoke to myself or the way I looked at myself. And, and I wasn't centered in myself I, I wasn't I had never felt anchored in myself I didn't even know that that was possible I I was often anchored in other people like almost like I I left my body and anchored myself in places outside of myself and now when I think about it some sometimes even to the point that I wasn't even aware that I as a human being as a separate someone existed which is quite strange so <clears throat> there are some different threads I want to weave into this but the main thread is the is this is the real to the main thread is is about the relationship you have with yourself and what it means to to be centered in yourself um so a year or so ago a dear friend and student and full moon walker we always go on full moon walks together so she shared an interesting, um, let's call it like a, a way of drawing a map of your interpersonal relationships. And if you're listening, if you're listening to this as a podcast, you and you you find my explanation of the map very confusing, you can see me draw it on YouTube. I'll put the link below. I'll draw it for, for you, those of you watching. I'll, I'll draw it for you, the map. Um, a blank piece of paper and kind of a dot in the middle. A dot in the middle. Just a dot. And that that's you. That is the center from which you relate to the world. So this is not to be self-centered in the way that it's explained in Western modern psychology, to be self-centered, that you think that the whole world <laughs> revolves around you, but your world actually revolves around you. It is, this means to be centered, to be centered in yourself, to be anchored in yourself. And there's a big difference between being self-centered and to be centered in yourself. And so many women that I work with or have worked with voice this fear of being, or that they're afraid that people will perceive them as self-centered or egotistical if they are centered in themselves or even if they care about themselves or are kind and have compassion for themselves um, but this is so important i think for our well-being and in the end for all of our other relationships because if, if I'm not centered in myself, how can I even relate to the world around me or other people? And Susan Aposhian, so Susan Aposhian is uh, 
is kind of the mother of body-mind psychotherapy and she presented a question the other day and she said, I'm gonna have to read it. Uh, if it's not kind and compassionate to ourselves, to our bodily selves, how can it be of benefit to anyone else? And it's such a good question to bring with you every single day. Is this kind and compassionate to myself, to my bodily self? Because I believe that if it's truly radically kind and compassionate to ourselves, it is kind and compassionate and of benefit for the people around us. Okay, so back to the map. <clears throat> so you're centered in yourself and it is from this center that you relate to everything and everyone around you or everything and everyone that you are aware of. And then you make a circle around the center. So I'm gonna make a circle, one circle around the center. So the innermost circle, the innermost circle. And this is your absolutely most closest relationships. So these are the relationships that will affect all of your other relationships. And you can place as many people as you like in these circles. And who do you place in that? In the closest circle. So when I did this, I really had to pause here. Because at first I placed my son and my partner in that circle. And then I kind of went to the next layer and then I paused and I stopped and I was like, hmm, where do I place myself? Because already there, I had almost forgot about myself. Here I am in the middle, I'm centered in myself. But I ha I'm also in relationship with myself somewhere. So I took away my son and my partner and I actually put myself in that first ring, which also feels quite radical and a bit forbidden. But I realized that no matter how much I twist and turn things, the relationship that I have with myself or the relationship that you have with yourself is the most important one because it's the only relationship that will last from the moment that you're born till the moment that you pass, pass away, the moment that you die, your physical self dies. That is the only relationship that will last your whole life. And it's also the relationship that will inform all the other relationships in one way or another. So this doesn't mean that you, if you place yourself in this circle, and I mean, this could be a practice to, to just imagine what it would feel like to be centered in yourself and to make the relationship you have with yourself matter the most and to just sit with the what are the, the thoughts and feelings and sensations that emerge from even just imagining that that would be a possibility um <clears throat> And that doesn't mean that I always put myself first, that I think that I am always, that what I want and what I need and everything is, is always, 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 always comes first. It, me it just means for me that this is the relationship of highest stake. 
because if this relationship goes wacky, it's gonna have a ripple effect. And if this relationship is prioritized and this relationship begins, begins to be filled with kindness and compassion and love and understanding, it will have a ripple effect. Mm. Um, there was something else I wanted to say. I don't remember. And I mean, I did this. So, so my friend gave me this practice. We're still going to continue with it, by the way. <clears throat> We're spiraling here. So she gave me, suggested this practice because I had an interpersonal relationship that felt very unclear to me. Like I was unsure how close Am I to this person or how close do I want to be to this person? How much of my energy do I want to invest in this relationship? I felt unclear about the boundaries and the priorities. And I mean, this so much supported me to get clear, like, because in that, uh, the relation, th this relationship ended up quite far away from the center, which meant it's an important, like all of my relationships are important, but they are not equally important. I don't go, um, and, and support the, my neighbor in the same way I do with my son, with my child. And sometimes that makes me sad, <laughs> but, no human being i don't believe i don't think any human being has the capacity to especially not if you're a mother to be there for everyone like you would be for your child or for yourself because you're with yourself all the time all the time remember that you're with yourself all the time even when you're sleeping you're there um so <clears throat> this is how it works you center yourself you make a circle around the center this is your closest and most important relationships or relationship and then you make another circle and i mean this is where i would place my partner and my son I mean, when my son, it, and that, this also depends on, on the age. I mean, when my son was still, it, I, I kind of feel like he's moved, he's been in the inner circle and then he kind of moves out and then he moves in. And so this is not like set in stone. <laughs> it can change, shift and change. And it's not that you have to, I first tend to these relationships and then those, it's just kind of to give a, a visual of, uh, of where you are in relationship to other humans. And then you continue outwards. You can make, and here's the thing, you can make as many circles, as many circles as you like. And really, I mean, in some way, every human being on this planet is somewhere on this map. Every human being on this planet is somewhere on this map. Um, and there is, and there is, we, there is this uh, feminist, feminist theory. I don't know how it kind of uh, ties into this. I don't remember exactly, but, but <clears throat> I don't remember what it's called, but it's, it's about that there is, in the center is the dominant culture, and then all other, 
cultures or minorities are the outer circles and that no it doesn't fit here so <clears throat> never mind never mind that we're just gonna continue <laughs> sometimes information comes that is of that is not important um so a journey of self-discovery is not only about discovering things about yourself it's also about nurturing the relationship that you have with yourself so when we're not sent when you're not centered in yourself it might be that you you center someone else here and you place yourself maybe over here and then there's you're centered in someone else and all of your life is your relationships are revolving around that and it goes it, it's it goes wacky and strange and I want to read something else for you here. I'm just going to say it and I'm like, oh my God, this is, um, is this really all over the place? My invitation is to do the practice and to do the map and explore what comes up for you. It can be really interesting. So... This is a book that's called The Enlightenment Process by Judith Backstone. I highly recommend it. A Guide to Embodied Spiritual Awakening. And um, I know many of you who are listening are uh, space holders and practitioners and uh, I really recommend this book because there's a lot of practices and a lot of practices that support you to anchor in yourself, which I think is a so important when we relate to other humans, which we all do, no matter if we're facilitators or space holders, we're, we're always in relationship to someone and something. And so what she speaks about is this subtle level of boundaries. So that boundaries is, is not only about how we, how much we give of ourselves or how much we receive, but it, that there is a a subtle level of boundaries that is she describe she says can be described as the placement of our consciousness in relation to our body and the bodies of other people so this is what i'm talking about being centered in yourself and to be actually centered in your physical self, in this physical body vehicle that you are currently relating to the world and around you through. <clears throat> and I love this, I love this quote because she says, the shift inward to our core, so the shift inward into centering yourself in your body is a deepened perspective on the world it feels as if we're relating to people from further away there is a sense that we are finding our true distance from other people as we discover our oneness with them and and this is what it might initially kind of, in this shift inward, 
this shift of coming into relationship with yourself, I think that is in the kind of the gap from being here to being centered in yourself. It might initially kind of feel like you're losing connection. Because especially if if we're kind of anchored outside of ourselves or we're centering something else in our lives, then that is how we kind of got used to relating and being in relationship. We think that that is to be in relationship and be in contact with. And then sudden this sudden shift inward might actually feel like you're distancing yourself. And for some people, it can actually be... Uh, how should I say this? That there might be a time of actual distancing, of solitude, to find your own core, to find a way to be centered in yourself from where you can say no naturally and where you can say yes naturally. Mm. Now my teacher would say, so where were you going? What was the point? <laughs> I don't know. Or I do know. You don't need to change who you are. You are a unique, beautiful, ugly, amazing human being that has never been before and will never be again. There is something about you that is unique to this world. You don't have to change anything. What you can do is see what happens if you begin to relate, to be in relationship with all that is you in a more kind and compassionate way. Mm. Tomorrow, so on September 7th, this tomorrow is depending on when you're listening to it. My weekly drop into self classes will begin again. The theme tomorrow is uh, depth begins at the surface. So we will explore this boundary of skin and how that that boundary of skin is also a way of shifting inward to your core of anchoring into yourself. And those classes run weekly. So they are an hour long. We meditate, we journal, we move, contemplate. Uh, Thursdays at 8 a.m. Central European time or Central European summertime at the moment. And then on uh, next week, September 12th, Tuesday, September 12th, my eight week um, course or journey that I've named Held will begin uh, <clears throat> Tuesday, September 12th. And this is also a journey of coming back to yourself, of shifting inward <clears throat> and centering yourself in yourself and 
come into relationship with the support that is available when you're centered. The earth, space, the spirit of the great mother, um, the wisdom of your animal body, the, the inner promptings of your needs and your rhythms. And so that is eight weeks. So it's eight sessions plus the drop into self, the Thursday movement classes are included in that. So um, if you want to join, there is still time. Would love to see you there. Hmm. I think that was it for today. Do the the relationship map and see what comes up. I would love to hear your own personal reflections or any reflections really from this. What what kind of what it sparked or lit up in you. Mm. And take care of yourself. Until next time. Much love.